Hello everyone, uh, this is Dr. Harun Ahmed. In this video, we are going to talk about cell and tissue culture techniques. Um, so why why do we need um, to worry about uh, these techniques? Because cell culture, cell and tissue culture are very important um, when it comes to um, gene manipulations, uh, culturing mammalian cells for cancer studies, or other different kind of research and producing new plant through tissue culture. So what do we need for um, cell or tissue culture? We need a source of cell material, which is what uh, depends on what kind of cell uh, you want to culture. Do you need a f uh, it needs to be freshly prepared uh, in the, uh, the cell. It has to be from a fresh um, wild uh, or a fresh stock of cells. Uh, in terms of bacterial cell culture, it can be um, a little bit older uh, and e they're easier to handle. So the suitable container. So for mammalian cell culture, um, we need flasks, specialized flasks. These can be bought from different companies, and these flasks are used to uh, culture um, animal cells or mammalian cells. So these are um, this this is I think T seventy five uh, flask. Um, these flasks can vary in size depending on the amount of cell you want to culture. Mm, on industrial scale, we use sophisticated fermenters, which are com controlled by computers. Now to gr grow a cell, uh, we need growth media and this growth media um, has glucose, water, amino acid, salt and other essential material that may vary based on the cell type you want to culture. Alright, so animal cells uh, primarily, um, well they need oxygen to survive and produce um, and produce uh, the energy which is the ATP however they also need a 5% carbon dioxide concentration uh, in the environment so they must be kept in an, uh, in an incubator which has a supply of oxygen and, and carbon dioxide not just oxygen so one of the essential it, um, <coughs> component of animal um, or, or, or mammalian cell um, culture is um, serum so serum can be different types, but usually the one we use is, is called uh, fetal bovine serum. Um, <clears throat> it, it comprises about uh, 5 to 10 percent of the growth media and it's essential for animal cell proliferation. Without serum, uh, most cells don't grow and they will just simply die. Alright, so what indicators do we need to look for when we are doing cell culture? So we need to have a look at um, the waste product um, which will cause a change in pH so the color of the media will change. Usually it's pink if you're using DMEM media and it will turn to yellow uh, if the cell overgrow and the pH changes because of uh, a lot of waste or cell death. You can also use other indicators like phenol red and as I said uh, sometimes color change in this like uh, for in this instance the red to yellow um, or the yeah the pink to yellow which I yeah, said earlier on. So another factor for cell culture is temperature and pH. It's very important to control the temperature at 37.5 degrees Celsius. It's the temperature for human body and if you're using mammalian cells or human body cells, you need to keep the temperature at 37.5 otherwise they're not going to survive and they're going to die. The pH is also critical. It needs to be um, about 7.5 if it goes above or below it will have drastic effects on cell growth but again this this depends on on the type of cell but from human cell these are the conditions so what are the different methods for measuring cell growth all right so basically in in our labs we use hemocytometer you can use that to actually count the number of cells it's usually a manual method you count the cells in a particular square and then you uh, do multiplication it's very simple um, or you can also use optical density through spectrophotometer, but the easier way is to use hemocytometer. It will just going to take about uh, four to five minutes. All right, steri sterilization is very critical in when it comes to cell or tissue growth. Um, for if the uh, flask or the media is not sterilized, then you will see bacterial growth and the cell will die. 
um, and we achieve sterilization through the use of antibiotics. Um, uh, and then if we are washing ourselves, then the media has to be heated in the oven, which can also be done with sterilization. Or sterilization can also, uh, is also critical if, if you're using a hood, which you use for cell culturing, uh, you need to make sure that you sterilize the hood uh, through the use of um, antiseptics, which is usually 70 to 75% uh, ethanol. And you need to sterilize your hands, your gloves, so it's very critical to, to have sterilized condition, otherwise bacteria and micro, um, myobacteria or, and fungi might grow in the cell culture. Alright, so there are two types of cells um, in, 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 that you can encounter. Some are adherent or uh, anchoring which are anchor dependent, so they attach to the flask itself and other cells, they can be anchor, anchorage independent. I have personally worked with anchorage dependent cells a lot, but anchorage independent cells are also critical when it comes to um, uh, producing proteins um, in a mammalian cell culture. So anchorage independent cells, a uh, cell <coughs> associated with body fluid, uh, can be blood cells, so these are type of cells that are anchorage independent. Uh, or um, grow, so these cells are grown in in, in suspension and, and uh, but using mostly using the same kind of flask, and these cells will also need subculturing. So once it reaches a certain number of cells in the in the container, you have to actually reduce the number of cells uh, to a process which is called subculturing. Otherwise, if the cell number grows beyond a certain number, then they will start dying. All right, so anchorage dependent cells. So most of the mm, uh, animal body cells or human body cells are anchorage dependent, which is what I said earlier on. That's what I used to work on when I used to design anti-cancer drugs. And they adhere to bottom of the flask to form a monolayer. And once the monolayer is formed and it starts forming bilayer, but then the cells start to die. And uh, well, eventually if you leave it for too long, depends on the type of cell, they will die. Alright, so once it covers the entire surface, it's called the cell called confluent, and that's the time we need to do subculturing. Uh, proliferation then stops and need to be subcultured at this point, remove the fresh media, proliferation can begin again. That is what I said. Alright, so there are two main categories of animal cell culture. Um, so it can be animal cell culture can divide into many, but generally, broadly speaking, they divide into two primary and continuous uh, cell lines. So Primary cell lines are actually uh, taken from uh, fresh tissue. They have got limited lifespan and you can subculture them to a certain number of time. They're, and they're, they're treated by uh, proteolytic enzymes. So the tissue is, what happens is that you, a hospital will provide you a tissue of the cell, might be liver or skin, and then you need to um, isolate individual cells from that tissue. So you use proteolytic enzymes, and you separate it into uh, single cells using different techniques um, and then you culture those primary cells. So even though you get a tissue but you actually do, um, try to uh, separate uh, the, the, the tissue cells into individual cells before you grow them in a cell culture. So continuous cell lines are actually derived from humans, uh, but they've been transformed. So continuous cell line, unlike the primary cell line, um, they can be grown from, uh, through uh, multiple um, uh, subculturing, and they can divide for uh, numerous cycles, while primary cells can only divide for a number, um, one or two cycles. And they can produce, uh, are, these are like immortalized cell lines, uh, and they are uh, new plastic often lose their anchorage dependency associated with terrorism. all right okay and but this is when if, if you subculture it a long time like if there are 50 subculture involved then they might lose the anchorage uh, dependence uh, and these are easy to culture so most of the time we use uh, continuous cell line or immortalized cell line which is another word for continuous cell line and these and the, way, the reason why we use them is because they're easy to culture, easy to handle, and they, you don't need a fresh cell line every time. All right.
So cell lines, this is just example of certain cell lines. Three T, uh, three three is a mouse cell line. This is generated from um, from a mouse, and the, the type of tissue this cell then be belongs is connective tissue, with the cell morphology is blast and um, growth and suspension. So it doesn't grow in suspension. It has to be an adherent cell line. And then Cho, CHO is uh, from, derived from hamster, the origin of tissue is ovary and the cell morphology is epithelial and then it is an uh, adherent cell line. So it, it grows by attaching to the surface. BHK21 is uh, again derived from hamster, it's a kidney, source is kidney and the cell type is fibroblast and it has to be attached as well. HeLa is derived from human and the source is cervix and it's epithelial cell line and Again, this one grows uh, uh, in, in, the, in the form of adherent cell lines. So why do it? Why do cell culture? Uh, particular cell can be isolated and clone um, isolation of mutant cells, uh, investigate, investigate cell growth, produce hybrid cells that have application in technology and produce important pharmaceutical vaccine and hormones. So all right, to summarize this, um, we use cell cultures to check the effect of our drugs on these on the growth of cell lines we can also use these cell lines to produce proteins we can also use these cell lines uh, to test our vaccines we can use these cell lines to study cell behavior so anything to do with cell study we we use cell cultures because that's the only way we can um, we can control the environment and in investigate the effects of different components, um, different aspects of a cell environment or variation in a cell machinery uh, to ch and see its effect on the oral cell growth or function. So I hope that gives you a better idea of why we do cell culture. All right. So if anybody has any question, then if you, please feel free to leave your comments. Uh, to leave your question in the comments and I will try to get back to you as soon as I can. Well, thank you very much everyone. Um, I hope this you got some information from this video. I will probably see you in another video. Good luck learning.